Today on Sugar Spun Run, I'm sharing a recipe for Coca-Cola cake. Hey Sugar Spun Bakers, Sam here, and today I am so excited to be sharing another carefully tested, well-researched, and perfected recipe. Today's recipe is my take on the classic Coca-Cola cake. We are going to be using two cans of Coke. Let's go ahead and get started. For today's recipe, you'll want to start by getting your oven preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, but today's recipe actually begins over on the stovetop. You will want to use a medium-sized saucepan, preferably one that has a lip like this one does. It's going to make pouring a lot easier, which is something you're gonna to have to do. And into this saucepan, we are going to add one cup of unsalted butter. And because we're going to be melting everything, I wanna just cut up the butter into pieces just to encourage it to melt a little bit faster. Now, along with the butter, we're going to be adding one 12 ounce can of Coke, Coca-Cola. And we'll add one half cup of natural unsweetened cocoa powder. Now for this recipe, I do not recommend using Dutch processed cocoa powder because while this cake really only has a very subtle Coca-Cola flavor to it, if you use Dutch processed, you are just going to end up with a very strong chocolate flavor instead. And we wanna go a little bit lighter on the chocolate flavor in this cake. In this cake particularly, you won't hear me say that very often. Now turn your stovetop heat to medium and we are just going to whisk everything together until the butter is completely melted. Now, once that butter is melted, I like to bring this mixture to a quick boil. And once we do have a nice boil going like we do here, we'll just remove this from our heat and we'll set it aside. We don't need it right now and we are going to move over to our dry ingredients. Now I have two cups of all-purpose flour already measured out and I'm going to be adding one and three-fourths cup of granulated sugar, two tablespoons of cornstarch, one and a half teaspoons of baking soda, a teaspoon of baking powder, and a teaspoon of salt. And we'll just whisk all of these ingredients together until they're really well combined. Okay, so hopefully your saucepan mixture has had a little bit of time to cool down. We'll go ahead and grab that now and we'll add this to our flour mixture. And I'm gonna try to pour this facing you, but my, my arms just don't work that way. Make sure you get all of that chocolate mixture out of there. I don't wanna leave any behind. Now just stir these ingredients together until you have a nice smooth batter. Make sure you're scraping the sides and bottom of your bowl. That's always really important anytime you're making a cake or just about anything. Next thing you're going to need is 3 fourths cup of sour cream. We'll also add two large eggs. I do prefer these to be at room temperature and a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And once again, we wanna stir everything together until it's really well combined. You want a nice smooth batter. So today we're going to be baking this in a 13 by nine inch baking dish. And before I add the cake, even though we're going to be serving it in the pan, I do like to lightly grease this with a little bit of baking spray. I don't like a lot of that baking spray in there. So I just like to use a paper towel to just kind of smear it around. That way we only have a light coating. All right, now just pour your batter into the prepared cake pan. And it's a pretty thin batter. So some of my cakes have a really dense batter, today's does not. And we'll take this over to our preheated oven where it's going to need to bake. Now, most often I make this cake in a metal pan. Typically that takes about 28 to 30 minutes in a metal pan. Today I'm using this light colored ceramic pan and it can take about 35 to 40 minutes to bake. Either way you bake the cake, the best way to test whether or not it is finished baking is to do the toothpick test means we're just gonna take a toothpick and insert it in the center of the cake. Now, ideally the toothpick will come out with a few moist crumbs or it will come out dry like today's did. That's how you know that it's done. Now, while the cake is cooling, we can prepare our frosting. Unlike many cake recipes, this frosting can be poured on while the cake is still warm, which is really nice. To make today's frosting, we are going to need to head back to the stovetop and you are going to need to grab yourself a medium-sized saucepan again. Now, for the frosting, you are going to need a 12 ounce can of Coca-Cola. Now, because we want to get as much of the soda flavor into the frosting as we possibly can, what we're going to do is reduce it. So we're going to cook out a lot of the water to make the flavor more potent. So we're starting with a 12 ounce can. The 12 ounce can is about one and a half cups. What we're going to do is we're going to cook this over medium or medium high heat. We're gonna bring it to a boil and we're just going to cook it until this mixture has been reduced. We want to reduce it until it is between one third and one half cup of Coca-Cola. I know I keep saying Coca-Cola a lot, but I feel like YouTube's gonna end up falsely flagging my channel if I just keep talking about Coke. So how long this takes to reduce is really going to depend on your stovetop. For me, I feel like it usually takes around seven to 10 minutes, and you just wanna check that it has reduced properly by pouring it into a measuring cup and making sure you are between the one third and one half line. 
This is looking pretty good, so I'm just going to pour that back in my saucepan because we're not done here. And I'm going to add one half cup of butter, and I have cut this into about tablespoon sized pieces. And the smart thing to do would have been to put the butter in first and then add the Coke back in because I just splattered it everywhere. Now this is unsalted butter, and I'm also going to add one fourth teaspoon of salt, but if you just wanna use salted butter, that would be fine here as well. Now we'll just cook this over medium heat until the butter is melted, and I do like to stir it occasionally. And once your butter is melted, we'll remove this from heat, and we are going to add three tablespoons of natural unsweetened, not Dutch processed cocoa powder. And we'll whisk this in until it's nicely combined and smooth. And I also have four cups of powdered sugar. And we'll add this as well and you can add it all at once. Oh, but maybe do it a little bit more gradually so you don't make a mess. It's my second one today. Now whisk this together until the sugar is completely absorbed and you have a nice smooth frosting. Now immediately we are going to pour this over our cake and like I said, if the cake is still warm, that's great. That's not a problem at all. Once again, I'm trying to pour this so you can see the frosting instead of just the bottom of the saucepan. Now we'll just smooth this over the surface of the cake. And now all that's left to do is wait for the cake and the frosting to cool completely before digging in. Or you can serve it while it's still a little bit warm with some vanilla ice cream. That is also pretty delicious. All right, let's go ahead and dig in. Would be nice if I knew how to cut a straight line. One day, one day. The corner piece is always so tricky to get out, but we did it. And that is how you make my take on Coca-Cola cake. I really think you're going to love this recipe. I can't wait for you to try it out at home. And if you do, please let me know what you think. I always love hearing from you. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.